big shout outs to Questing for Glory, RPG for Net Break, everyone. Give me a chance to show you this run. It's a pretty cool one. So, just to get set up for any run, generally we need to erase all of our saves. And you can do that by pressing start and select at the same time on the player 2 controller while hovering over a save. Not that anyone ever really wants to delete one of their saves. But uh, yeah, this game is going to manipulate RNG pretty heavily and one of the first things to do is delete all your saves because the RNG progresses based on how much time you spend on the character load or the save load screen. And when you delete all your saves and start a new game, you basically start at an RNG of zero. So I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. But I guess we'll get going. Uh, no, this is not emulated. This is played on console, original hardware, all that good stuff. I guess we'll do a countdown. And we'll start. So five, four, three, two, one, go. So we want to set our battle speed to wait. One letter, pretty standard RPG fare, save frames, save text. So yeah, RNG manipulation, it's something that scares a lot of people about this game, but really there's only a couple fights where it's necessary. Uh, a couple more fights where it is probably in your best interest to do it because it's actually easier than doing a fight. And, uh, yeah. The RNG in this game has two main values, the battle value and the crit value. Um, at the end of any battle, or when you start and load a new game, the battle value and the crit value are set to the same value between uh, 0 and 254 or something like that. Uh, first menu here we're just going to set up our battle speed, cursor on memory. Again pretty standard RPG fare. Renaming her to single character, making sure not to match because well you talk to old mom there, she'll talk to you a little bit and give you some money, which is alright, but we don't really need any money. So, slam into Marley here. The first part of this run, it's a little bit slow. You really gotta get your uh, get yourself into the run about 5-6 minutes before there's any real battles or anything. So right now we're just kinda trying to progress the story as quickly as possible. Um, there is a trick that I'm going to try for, it doesn't really save any time, but it's pretty swag. So i got to talk to this guy to progress the story, and coming up, I'm going to try for it. It's called Candy Skip. Oh, I was one pixel away. <laughs> so you can make it to the loading zone for the next screen before the candy cutscene. It's really only important for... Uh, in any percent of New Game Plus. With uh, New Game Plus, you only ever go through that section once. In this run, we're gonna go through that section multiple times, so we're still gonna get the candy cutscene no matter what. Um, yeah, so back to RNG manipulation. Uh, the two values, battle value and crit value, um, when you load or when you finish a battle, that same value is written to both the battle value and the crit value, but when you start a fight, it kind of jumps to a specific starting value based on what window you're in. So there's like 16 starting windows, roughly. Some of them are bigger than others, some of them are more important. Thanks for the good luck. Relium, that was an awesome run. And uh, so... What, really what it comes down to is you want to be in the right windows as you're progressing through the fights in order to manipulate enemy targeting and damage rolls. Damage rolls is very important. Um, 
but there are certain fights where we have criticals manipulated so that means if the the crit value needs to be manipulated the fight before the fight with the crit has to be perfect and for the most part crits are only going to save like an extra attack a couple seconds here a couple seconds there but there are certain fights where you need your critical value to be there otherwise someone might die uh, a couple other things but generally you just want to play perfect play the same and as long as you do that then you're okay so we're gonna pick up the pendant here and actually finally get into the first fight of the game which is against some blue imps um, the beginning of the game has changed a lot over the last couple of years. There's been, you know, a second shaved here, a second shaved there. There's a lot of really interesting different ways to approach the beginning, but ultimately what's happening is the most important fight is the Naga Et fight, which is still about six minutes out. And with the Nega Et fight, you really want to have the proper battle value. The crit value doesn't matter that much. But if you can avoid them casting any slow spells, then we're going to save a bunch of time. And that's really what it comes down to. RNG manipulation is going to save you time, but it's not going to make anything, like, more possible or less possible. Except for a certain handful of bosses. So here, try and make some quick inputs. Try not to get hit. Uh, looks like we are going to do the old strat. Because I messed up just a little bit. It's no big deal. So this is one thing that's kind of a, a bonus to having played this game for quite a long time. Is I know the old strategies, which are generally just if you mess up the new strategy, you can default to that. And when I say messed up, we're talking like a couple seconds here, if that. So that was bird skip. It's pretty tough, but not as hard as you would think. Into the forest. There's a bunch of battles here, but we don't want to fight them just yet. We want to have Luca in our party too, because it's more important that she learns fire than Chrono learns anything. So yeah, we get to <laughs> we get to see the fun that Marley has when she goes back in time here. She's like, yeah, I'm just gonna play queen, why not? She already knows how to play princess. Yeah, I see chat just going crazy about the music. That I think that's honestly one of the one of the great things about this game that really keeps me coming back is you know you just want to sit down and play this and listen to the awesome music puts you in a good mood being in a good mood tends to keep you uh, you know playing better so here we learn what happens when you start messing around with the timeline Marley still won't learn her lesson even after she disappears into the void here. Let's just change the past. <laughs> what will that get you? Absolute nihilism. It's a tough call. Blue light. FF, FF6 music is also amazing. Cool sort of side fact about this game and its music is that, uh, well, Yansuri Mitsuda like wrote most of the themes and composed the majority of the music. He got really, really sick near the uh, the crunch at the end of this game, and so Nobu Umatsu came in, who's of Final Fantasy fame, and. Uh, he finished up a lot of the, the soundtrack, so he took the music that was already written and just kind of like polished it up in his own way. So that's why, like, one of the reasons why this game is so good, it's just like obvious dream team. Silent Martyr with the shout out. I'm 
definitely in the same boat as uh, Queso there. Uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't be sad to see an HD remake, but this game's sprite work is just so amazing. There's not really a reason to. Whatever you do, don't give it the uh, the FF6 mobile treatment, please. Alright, so let's see if I can remember the old fights here. <laughs> yeah, we got an extra attack, that's okay. So yeah, basically getting the extra attack in the Blue Imps fight about five minutes ago means that my critical values were off for the intended strategy for that fight. It's really not going to matter too much because every time that you reset, it'll uh, reset your RNG for you. So we're going to get some slow spells, almost guaranteed. Really not the end of the world, though. And that's the thing, like, if you're off RNG, you can always just resort to non-RNG manipulated battles. It's just going to be a tiny bit slower. So coming in here, going to move, try and put Luca a little bit closer to her starting position in the battle. And we're still going to treat this fight as if I was RN, RN, on RNG, because sometimes you can just end up there anyway. Hey, we're looking good. No, we're not. Yeah, here comes the slow spells. Now, unfortunately, I need to wait for these guys to move closer together to fire whirl them. Yeah, this isn't ideal. Is the commentary pre-recorded? No, it's definitely not. Definitely doing this live, on the fly, just for your entertainment. <laughs> So now we get to meet Frog. Definitely one of the better themes in the game. Second best song in my personal opinion. But I, I'm a little bit generic there. I really, really like Corridors of Time. Um, so yeah, going through this section, we are no longer on RNG manipulation, but it's just one more fight. That's all that really matters. So what's your name? Oops. Still a G in there. Okay, so now we got Frog. So the Cathedral, it's not really that difficult. There's gonna be a, <laughs> a minor frame save coming up to get a power tab. And I'm going to pick up this revive as safety. There's a lot of places where if Chrono or Luca dies and doesn't get experience, it's going to throw off a lot. So having that extra revive is really going to matter a lot. Nice fade out. So I guess that's a good time to talk about the fade out glitch, which is going to be used quite a bit in this run. If you walk into a loading zone and open and close the menu, you're able to walk into other loading zones and triggers and cause them to to trigger and the game will progress but you don't actually have to do them so you can use it to skip quite a few fights skip a lot of cutscenes 
like I was able to pick up the tab without the game really freezing me there. And the fade out glitch also enables save anywhere, which we're gonna see in just a second. The most important thing is being able to hit the fire world before anyone hits you. Bacon sandwich. Making sure to hit the other enemy with frog because a uh, chrono and Luca attack is not going to kill one of those guys, but a frog and Luca attack will. So you kind of want to spread the damage out as much as you can when you're off RNG. And that's one thing that just comes from experience. Like, I've messed up the beginning of this game so many times that <laughs> it's not really going to matter. Alright, so a bit of a menu here. We're also going to do a safety save. You don't need to do this save, but if I mess up, there's no coming back. Once you get taken into the next room, there is no loading zone. Alright, so we got the save anywhere. We're going to unequip Luca, which is going to boost her magic power and magic defense. Save and reload, and that'll put us within the cutscene, but still able to move. We're going to use another trick where we scroll NPCs off the screen as they're talking, which cancels their text box. Minor frame saves, but definitely matters. Chancellor. You can push into Yakra when he's spinning to speed up his animation a little bit, but there's a chance that you might get stuck in him and then you end up having to fight the fight. So there was a whole bunch of glitches that just happened right there, <laughs> basically skipping the boss. So using the fade out glitch, and when you fade out onto a save point, the game allows you to save anywhere until you enter another room with a save point. I unequipped Luca, like I said, it boosts her magic defense, but mainly the point of doing that is it boosts her magic attack by quite a lot. And yeah, Yakker's a pretty easy fight, and Vanilla-wise, bosses really don't give that much experience or tech points, so skipping them doesn't really matter that much. So, now we're gonna sort of browbeat Marley, show her that messing with the time stream is a bad idea. Uh, also, a minor time save here. I'm gonna sort of walk up and hit the top of the trigger for the cutscene instead of the bottom. That's going to put Chrono very, very close to Luca and Marley, so when the cutscene ends up or ends, they can both group up onto Chrono. And again, this is just saving frames, but it adds up over the course of the run quite a bit. A lot of very minor movement things that will save you time. Oh, the pizzas. Pizzas in chat sustain me, just so you guys know. Alright. So that's frog skip. <laughs> Basically, as long as you don't touch him, you're good. Otherwise, he goes into a big sob story about how he just has no self esteem. Sad frog. It's time to go back to the future. I said it. I know I did. Uh, but first, we're going to do a quick little skip. Saves a little bit of time. Oh, going to make sure. We're going to save and load here to confuse the game's triggers a little bit. And I'm going to save and load on a specific window in order to manipulate RNG coming up. So yeah, that's called reverse bird skip. 
Uh, it's essentially the same way as skipping the road fight on the way forward, but you have to do the save and load in order for the triggers to be loaded as if you entered the room from the right entrance instead of the bottom entrance. Because you're not really supposed to be able to save and load on that, so the way that the, the game is programmed, if you enter that room, it's default as if you entered it from the right, but if you enter it from the bottom, then the triggers are kind of swapped around a little bit. So during that menu, I also equipped Chrono with the Power Glove, put, put uh, two Power Tabs on him, and uh, also gave him the Steel Saber, which is going to be just enough of a boost on his attack so that we can take out the guards after the trial sequence with one attack. By guards, I mean single guard, because we're going to skip all the other guards. Alright, so I tend to sk split right here uh, because I go for candy skip every run and splitting at the boss, if you got candy skip, it's going to throw off your splits in general, so splitting after the candy skip would happen on your way back, kind of important. So yeah, we're into the trial sequence now. I know everyone really loves the trial sequence, it's pretty fun. Uh, one thing that I always like to point out, uh, from a speedrun perspective, uh, in the English version of the game, the North American version of the game anyway, you want to be not guilty, because text is a lot slower than in Japanese, and uh, when you're guilty, or, or sorry, you want to be guilty, not not guilty, uh, and when you're not guilty, then uh, you get a whole bunch of extra text boxes. In the Japanese version, you actually want guilty because the way that the, the jurors line up after the trial is quicker. So there's a lot of weird, subtle differences between the North American and Japanese speedrun. I guess now's a good time to point out that the uh, Japanese speedrun, the unequipped glitch, does give you your defense bonus, but it doesn't give you your magic attack bonus. So yeah, Chancellor is just being a jerk here, but luckily for us, we have pro bono lawyer extraordinaire Pierre here, Pierre Wright, and even though we want to get guilty, and we're going to admit to being guilty, Pierre is so good that he's probably going to make sure that we're not guilty anyway. So first thing we do is we blame the girl, because it's always the girl's fault. And in this cutscene, the text comes up, but you actually don't need to progress it. This cutscene's on a timer, so it's going to end regardless. And then, yeah, it appears like, no way are you dra dragging my uh, defendant's name through the mud. Absolutely not. And then he's like, well, you know, did... Do you want to kidnap her for money? And we're going to say yes. We kidnapped her for the money. Pierre kind of face palms a little bit, but he's just so convincing that I think these jurors are going to find us not guilty anyway. The truth of the matter here is that this second juror is complete RNG. Hey, we got guilty. We saved eight seconds. That doesn't happen very often. By the odds, I think it's like 54% chance to be not guilty and 46% chance to be guilty so we beat the odds here guys saving those eight seconds just take the plea deal yeah exactly I was gonna burn him at the stake but you know guillotines also of the ways to off a character is probably the most humane. And uh, <laughs> if you get not guilty, there's some aethers and stuff that the game drops. If you want to pick those up for safety, if you're like just learning the category, there's not really a big problem with that, but it's a little slow. Not only do you pick it up and get like a text box, but the guard also like batters you a little bit and the screen has to scroll. So 
We're going to avoid all that. So I'm going to make a safety save. There's going to be quite a few uh, marathon safety saves along the way, where if I was doing an actual attempt, I would just keep pressing through. I'm pretty confident that I reloaded correctly back when we did the reverse bird skip, which seems like, you know, 10 minutes ago now. So yeah, here, he just calls the guards instantly. Otherwise, he'd be like, I didn't hear about an execution. And then uh, the Chancellor jumps around like the, the child he is. Cool little frame save here, too. We're going to heal at the cup, but you can move a little bit right after talking to the cup. Sort of like chest turning in Link to the Past. Okay, so we save here, mash onto these guys, and the moment of truth on whether my reload was correct or not. Because like I said, uh, crits don't matter, but we're doing a regular attack to try and kill this first guard. And when the, the game resets you to a specific uh, number based on the window you're in, I should be able to mash Cyclone here and hit him for 60. Which is exact ease to kill this guy. Alright, so there's a bit of RNG here and a few like pretty tight setups. And the first really long fade out. Uh, so I walked into the loading zone. I'm gonna walk into a battle trigger. Technically, it's faster to fight this fight. Except for the fact that we're gonna manipulate crit values for the dragon tank fight, so we don't want to get into any fights. You can tell that the text box started to open up there, so I did hit the trigger. So this guy... I just want him to show me his butt. Show me your butt, man. There we go. Not taking any chances. You can sort of YOLO these guys a little bit. With a little luck, you can make it pretty far. But you don't want to get into an extra fight because that's going to progress my RNG window well past where I need to go. Another... Kinda tight, not really. Skip between these two guys. I'm gonna try and get this in two fades. Nice. Okay. So again, we're gonna do a safety save here just in case. I haven't really had much trouble with Dragon Tank in a while. But it's a pretty big loss if you do die here. So with the RNG manipulation that started with my save and reset on the bird skip, you know, over 10 minutes ago now, it all culminates into this fight and some other fights moving forward. So I still need to do this fight correctly. Uh, this is the first real show of buffering inputs. So I'm going to wait for the enemy to attack and then make my inputs. So I'm able to choose my targets during animations and minimize any time loss that happens, while also making it a lot easier to stay on script. Especially being on battle speed 1. Crit from Luca. We're gonna do a neat trick here, which is a bit of a menu glitch. Cyclone pop in here, and then pop out. And Chrono's gonna fire off a Cyclone, and it skips one of Dragon Tank's attacks. It's a minor time save, but skipping an enemy attack is like 3-4 seconds. So one attack here, and a Fire Whirl, and we should be good.
And stabby stabby. I always found this uh, pretty comical. Where you end up walking over the Chancellor and his, uh, his cohorts here. Really important to pick up this shelter as well. A tiny saver here. We're skipping the trigger where the guards are like, Oh no, we gotta catch them. They're getting away. <laughs> nice sprite. Yeah. Coming up on the Chancellor's what face. Glad to see all the uh, the Chrono Trigger emotes in chat. Lots of fun. If there are two emotes that uh, sustain me. It's the Capanu and the the Ash Pizza. Okay, so Marley finally decides that living under Daddy's rule is not for her, and she'd rather go mess around with the timeline and maybe cause herself to disappear again. A little reckless, for sure, but... Alright. So, we're heading into the future. There's a lot of really awesome platforming areas, or at least, like battle avoidance and there's a couple other interesting tricks coming up in lab 16 uh, but the big thing with the future is we're going to skip the guardian fight which is quite the big skip actually that fight's like really really easy but it's also really really long because it's generally about two cycles you can get away with one cycle with uh, berserker strats but having a fully manipulated Berserk battle can be difficult. There'll be more of those coming up in the future. There it was. The what face. So here you gotta make sure that you don't mash, otherwise you can hit the, the portal and end up going back and getting chased away. So... Rat stole from me. I can walk through battle triggers. Want to have a chest text box and a rat text box open at the same time. So open the chest. Rat steals. Oh, we don't need that money. It's not not the end of the world. But I, ideally, you want to avoid that. So yeah, lab sixteen. Lots of cool skips and everything so these guys are gonna be very surprised at how healthy we look <laughs> so there are people who can beat up those freaky mutants so down here again we're gonna use fade out to skip the the boss but there is kind of a catch to this particular fade out where in the the room where guardian is if you press the menu button the x button then you're going to trigger a fight and we don't have access to the character swap menu yet so i'm going to have to swap my menu button to a different location do a tiny bit of equipping here too So I swap my menu button to A, and then we're able to bypass the X button trigger here. Oops, that did not work. But I was well into the trigger. That did work. Okay. <laughs> that was really weird. Normally your characters get thrown to the left and right when you actually trigger the cutscene. Uh, 
so a lot of players actually swap their controls at the beginning of the game, and you can do that by just swapping X and Y. My muscle memory is too strong, and I'm just not really able to do that without messing up a bunch. Alright, so that was Guardian Skip. And I'm swapping my controls back. This is just gonna be vanilla controls for this guy. Rat's not getting away today. You can actually catch the rat first frame. It's actually a little bit slower, because he runs slower after you've caught him. Right, so there's some very important battle skips here. We're still holding our RNG manipulation from our reset like 25 minutes ago now. So any fight is going to be a bad situation. And up coming up is another use of fade out. It's just saving. Actually, this one saves about a minute. Cool. Yeah, so there's a whole animation of the day of Lavos and uh, him coming out destroying 2300 or 1990x, I guess. Uh, but by fading out into the start of the cutscene, it jumps past that first animation and takes us right to the next one. As you can see, Luca's kind of stuck in the uh, in the control panel there. And uh, one thing you might not have noticed when I did uh, <laughs> when I did my menu for the Guardian skip is I equipped the Berserker on Marley, and that's going to help quite a bit on the next battle with the buggers. But I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. We have the Johnny race. I mean, if there's any place that my run's gonna die, it's probably the Johnny race. It's a marathon special. Skipping all these fights. There are slightly faster ways to go through there, but the, uh, the time save to danger ratio is just a little bit too high for me, especially in a marathon. Yeah, everyone's like, oh, you made it through. You beat a boss. And it's like, yeah, we beat a boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least the game thinks that we uh, we beat a boss. Proceeds. So now we're going to get the bike key. And we are on our way to Johnny, to ride like the wind. Yeah, everyone remembers the Johnny race. You can even get special rewards, I believe, depending on your score. I don't think that's ever really happened for me. Seeds of Hope. Hey Shadow Killer, thanks for the good luck. So, little known fact about the Johnny fight here. If you press the uh, the X button, you can change your your view. So if you see the, the fight starts pretty zoomed in right here, but if I press the X button, it zooms out. It doesn't actually change anything. But I find it's a little bit easier to sort of gauge where I am versus Johnny. And we're going to make sure that we don't lose this guy, so we're going to take it pretty safe starting now. Just use your boost in the last couple seconds and you're fine. Okay. So there is a bit of a tight fight. Not super tight, but it showcases one of the more interesting battle strategies. Where what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this fight. Marley is going to get a critical because of her Berserker. 
And I'm not going to attack with Chrono right away until this guy dies. So that I can have Luca's turn up and buffer her attack during Chrono's attack. And that way it's a little bit safer to make sure that you get the attack off. Because if Chrono gets hit here, and he will get hit if you're slow, he dies and you have to use your safety revive. And the, the experience for that fight is actually important. The experience route is very, very, very tight. So I, I'm depending on my time frame, I'm gonna go for something which I don't think has ever been attempted in a marathon before. But it really depends on my time frame. Like I'm not gonna wait around forever for it to happen. But after the next fight, uh, actually after the next two fights, there's gonna be a slime fight where it's RNG essentially on what pattern you're gonna get. There's five slimes and whether they're acids or alkaline, it's based on the frame that you enter the room. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda look at my look at my timer when I do my shelter, and then I'm gonna look at my timer again when I do a safety save. And if I haven't gotten a rollover, I'm gonna attempt to do the slime manipulation, trying to get five greens. So since we already had a 9, I had to name him 8. But eight's a good name for a robot, too. <laughs> so, uh... Well, Robo is a sad robot. He is never going to give us up. He's never going to let us down. He's never going to run around or desert us. He'll be a loyal robot forever and ever. He knows the game. So just walking through that section so that we don't trigger a fight. It works in both directions. Shelter. And 37. So this fight, it's a little bit different from the way it used to be. You used to just kind of wait for all the battle, all the menus and hold X, but now we're going to attack with him, get a crit with Robo, and set Luca to mid-tonic memory, which is pretty important. Not incredibly important, but pretty important. So we got 37 here. There's the 38. So that rollover happened. It's hard to say exactly when the rollover happened. You know what? Just for you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. I think we are in the position to try. I'm trying to set myself up precisely here. And we're gonna wait for the 39 rollover. I'm just gonna focus. definitely a little bit behind but the uh, the exact frame that I'm looking for is just shortly after the minute rollover so if I get the minute rollover position myself right and then I hit the B button as quickly as this rolls over to 39 All right, definitely losing a little bit of time the 38 must have been right after I hit the menu. But if we get a good green slime fight, then it's still well worth the time. And also, we're kind of showing off a little bit of swag. This is something that's never really been done before. In a marathon setting, that's for sure. Moment of truth. Here we go. Four greens is very, very good, though. So we can mash a cyclone here. Four greens is still a very good fight. 
Rocket Punch. Alright, we're gonna get a counter. That's unfortunate. Still, this is this fight, the rolls have been very, very good. Can Robo give us a, a high, high damage roll on the acid? No, no, he can't. Yeah, so if you want to think about it, there's uh, basically a string of 60 numbers that are either green or red slimes. And as the uh, the game progresses through the frames, it kind of just travels along that string. So getting four greens means that I was exactly one frame off of getting my five green fight, which is still really close and really good. I'm gonna do a heal here on everybody since we took damage. We got the counter. Uh, interesting little trick here too when you close this text box if you hold all of the keys you need to press for the password it just inputs them in the right direction for you or the the right order for you that also works on the the Lara password later on I seem very Canadian yeah, it might be the might be the case <laughs> definitely might be the case So, just want to point out, uh, there's a mini breakaway that happens right here, and I'm not exactly sure why. But as we re regain control and we're walking up the stairs here, we're going to see Robo and Luca slightly offset from where they should be if they were following Chrono the right way. And that's going to be very, very important later on in the run. Kaneda! There's a trick here that I'm going to try for. It doesn't actually save any time, but it's kind of interesting. You position yourself inside Robo here. And I'm buffering run and uh, right. And if I do it correctly, this guy is going to get frozen in place. Nice. We did it. I'm just going to stand in front of him and say no. It saves like tiny bit of time, if any, really. I should probably be mashing the text too. Don't mind me. Yeah, poor Robo. So yeah, this fight can be very dangerous, especially on Battle Speed 1. It's the reason why I safety saved. As long as I get my quick cyclone off, then everything should be fine. Yeah, that was quick enough. We're good. So we're gonna watch who the back row punches, and whoever gets punched two or more times is gonna get the heal from Luca. And it was Luca, which is ideal because I don't need to fumble with targeting. I'm gonna use that animation to buffer Chrono's targeting for his Cyclone. Take out the back row before they get any other punches off. This fight's going ideally. Three punches. Yeah. Textbook our series fight. Really glad. It's basically how fast you get your first cyclone off denotes how the rest of the fight is gonna go. And I'm just setting Luca to Flame Toss Memory for another fight coming up. Now 
Yeah, that couldn't have gone any better. Yeah, CFB, uh, the LSS trick has come quite a long way. If you include human error, it's now about, I'd say, 45% chance of hitting it. So, like, I, I hit it about one in every four or five times now. And as long as you don't get RNG, it's basically 50-50, and you make the correct inputs, you should be able to hit it all the time. There's some new uh, pause buffer strats on top of a really, really awesome position at the bucket. <laughs> There's a, a really, like, honestly, the best part about the new setup is the bucket position because it gives you such a wide window in order to get as far left as you need to for LSS. Combined, combined with some controller-destroying mash strats, it's, it's pretty straightforward nowadays. It's just... There is still a mystery factor of about 50% whether you're going to hit it or not, but it's not the end of the world. Ah, more guests! So, welcome to the end of time. This is a place that I know all too well. Because this is where the Lavo Shell Skip happens, and this music is essentially burnt into my brain <laughs> at this point. So one of us has to say who it'll be. I'm holding Start plus B, and that closes the character select menu on the first frame. I use Start plus B a lot in all of my fadeouts, so I can close my menu as soon as possible as well, too. So I'm going to talk to the bucket, which is, in my opinion, the quickest way to set up to progress here. And on to frog form specchio. So what is LSS? LSS is Lavo Shell Skip, which is it's basically a very difficult combination of tricks uh, that isn't as difficult as it used to be now. It's actually realistic. Uh, that allows you to skip all of the Lavo Shell refights at the end. So it's about, you know, 15 to 18 minutes of time save. Hopefully Specchio doesn't troll me here. Making sure I hit all the corners. And it it used to be a TAS only trick, but after a lot of people beating their heads on it for far too long, we were able to work out a way to get it RTA consistent. Like my current PB has first try LSS. I'm gonna try and get that for you guys, but I mean, the trick is a little bit uh, random still. Alright, so we learned magic. We're not going to talk to the old man as much as he wants to talk to us. I'm going to go to Medino. Uh, I believe Puexel showed off this trick, which is something relatively new, Chrono Trigger wise. And new for Chrono Trigger is like generally about six months to a year old. So I eat the cake, swap my party members to regain control, which is a trick also used in Lavo Shell Skip. And you can get out the door without having to do the full cutscene. This is a bit of a deviation from the standard route, uh, because I'm going to be using Luca instead of Marley later, and Luca has one less speed. But it shouldn't matter. Maybe we get lucky and get a crit? No. So again, coming up on a boss skip. Learning Antipode is pretty important. This is the Hecarin skip. This is where things start to get a little bit more difficult. You can't just like run into your battle trigger anymore. You have to set yourself on a certain certain run cycle as well. Running away here before Marley attacks or the the gin bottle takes any MP is also very ideal. 
Boom. So yeah, again, standard speed run fair. Just run away from all the fights. I could unequip the, uh, or remove the Berserker from Marley just to make sure that there's no chance of any extra attacks during this section, but... I'm going to be doing that in a menu coming up soon. Fade out a Rolly fight. Skip a bat fight just by using corner push. Which is kind of the same thing as the the bird skip at the beginning. Alright. So this is going to be Hecarin skip. I'm going to do a save just in case I miss it. Fade out to get the save anywhere. Yep. Missed the save anywhere. Did not hear that ding from the save point. There it is. Alright, that looked good. Uh, so, as I run into the room, I release the run button just for a tiny little bit. And that sets me on a proper run cycle, which will allow me to bypass the battle trigger. And the battle will start with Hecarin on screen, already dead and you just go past it. Yeah, that was awesome. This is a pretty execution heavy section of the run. So there's the Hecarin skip here. Nice, saved about five seconds on that split even when I missed the save anywhere. Um, and then now we have a end of time save anywhere, which is almost a mini LSS, but it's really not nearly as difficult. So we are going to go for a breakaway here, but luckily the way that the game works is if we start moving, like I have my movement buffered as I'm coming out of this portal, and that's going to offset player two and player three from Chrono just a tiny bit. And it's enough that we get the group up at the right time. I'll point that out when it happens. So I'm storing the pillar behind Gaspar's text box. Setting up on a proper position. Double tapping A. And I'm going to try and swap here. Nice. Onto the save point. Perfect. So that is end of time save anywhere. It saves about 40 seconds. And now I have save anywhere instead of having to go into the cathedral to get it in order to skip the uh, the Zombor fight. Ooh, thought I triggered the fight. Alright, so a bit of fetch questing here. But it's fetch quest with a twist. So we go here, these guys are just not willing to walk the 20 feet to the castle in order to get their own supplies. I mean, they're fighting... Megas' troops, so we'll give him that. So we have to go and get the jerky for those guys. But uh, funnily enough, we're not, not going to give them the jerky. Oh, it's you again. Such rude guards. Uh, going to do a bit of uh, scrolling off-screen text skip. And we have to wait for this text box to close, otherwise the story value will not progress. I think the uh, the snow is the best music in the game. The snow track. We'll get that in a couple hours here. <laughs> So, the Zombor skip here, which is really just the captain skip, uh, this is pretty tough. This is three pretty precise release Bs and a precise menu opening. Yeah, that was not right. This is probably the hardest skip in the game other than LSS, in my opinion. That should be good. 
because the loads don't really matter. Release B to get in the right position there. I hope I was far enough. That's why I didn't save over my other save file, just in case I have to reload. That's good. All right, so that's Zombor Skip. And since we didn't give him the jerky, we still have it in our inventory, which is kind of hilarious. All right, this is probably the the most difficult part of a marathon speed run because if I mess up, I have to reset pretty far back. Uh, so we want Berserker off you, Berserker on Chrono, Power Glove, Mirage Hand, all tabs on Chrono. We're gonna save and reload, and this is a mash load. Alright, that's the later window. I think that's the 202. We'll see what happens. So we're looking at Chrono's first attack here. That's a 404. Uh, right. So Luca's gonna attack to give me enough time to sneak into Robo's menu and then run away. The reason I'm doing that is I'm setting up a very specific value so that I can have criticals coming up on the Masamune fight. But if I get into any fight in this section, I have to reset back to that point. This is probably the most unforgiving part of this speedrun. So I just need to make sure that I, I play well. Denodoro is my zen. When I was practicing this on console, you just... Eventually you learn where all the triggers are and just move around them. I mean, mountains are super nice. Might not look like much, but I'm skipping tons and tons and tons of battle triggers here. And last big one. Unfortunately, no koala for this run. We do want to pick up the speed tap, too. This is going to go on to Luca in a little bit. So the uh, Zerk Chrono fight here is a little bit scary because you don't have the slash attack in order to get him out of his uh, counter phase. So everything needs to go right otherwise. Fingers crossed for me, guys. But the very specific value that I set up about two minutes ago by attacking with Luca and then running away is going to sneak two criticals in this fight. So, yeah, you want all of the attacks to happen on the, the left guy because he doesn't counter. And since Chrono's berserked, you need to be very quick with your inputs, otherwise he's going to sneak in and probably attack the wrong guy. This berserker is just going to attack whoever it wants. Alright, that was good. So the rest of this should be pretty straightforward. We're going to learn Fire Punch at the very last minute. And we're going to use that to good effect in this next battle. Massa's bravery, Mune's knowledge. Wonder Twin powers activate. We become Skippy Leg Day. So with this fight, uh, after you deal half of his HP in damage, uh, he's going to move to a more dangerous phase. But if you can do that before he even goes into his uh, storing wind power counter phase, you actually skip that entirely. So what I'm going to do here with Luca is input my fire, but since Chrono's Berserk is going to make him act more like an enemy, he can skip in, in front of Luca. 
and cheat a little bit of ATV. It's pretty important. Uh, one of the other important things with this fight is you need to make sure all of your attacks are input only during animations if you're too quick or too slow. Like if you make your input after Chrono is back in position, it can throw off the fight. Uh, Masamune, uh, he targets based on position as well as by battle value. So you need to be very, very certain that things are right. And you need to be essentially in the pocket. But yeah, we don't have to heal or anything for this fight, which makes it quite a bit quicker. It's just, like I said, a little bit dangerous. At this point, we're not danger in any danger now. And we were able to get that off before Chrono's attack, which is good. Boom. Alright, 104xx Masamune, pretty good. Ideally you want to be 103 or less, but for Marathon Run that's pretty good. Yeah, so that, that's a pretty big relief to be honest. We are past the biggest crunch point. Now, if there's any errors that I make, I should just be able to reset pretty close to the boss fight. Instead of having to go through like two minutes of mountain before the boss fight and doing it again. The rest of the run is free. <laughs> JK. So yeah, we're on to Nisbel now. There is the, the biggest menu in the game coming up. And I'm actually going to save before the menu, because if I accidentally use speed tab on someone that I'm not supposed to, there's no way to get it back unless I can reset. So, we will do that. So, we'll sell some stuff. We're going to do some unequipping. Equip her with a plasma gun. Please. There we go. Take the Berserker off Chrono. Item. Speed tab on Luca. A quick Robo. And uh, the reason that I'm picking up the tabs is so that I don't need to unequip Marley. We're just not going to use her for the rest of the run, essentially. Menu done. This game doesn't really have ginormous menus. Like when I say that's the biggest menu in the game compared to something like Final Fantasy IX, it's a joke. Uh, but really, using Luca over Marley doesn't save too, too much time. Uh, but I'm still holding out hope that I can get a a better Magus fight using Berserk on Frog and Luca instead of Robo. I have a script which is about as quick as the current fight, but it's a little bit more dangerous, so we're not going to be doing that today, unfortunately. So let's see if we can get some good moonwalks here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at those moonwalks. So we got the other part of the sword. And we have to go talk to Melchior to learn that we need the red rock. And then we'll go fight Nisbel, get the red rock from Ayla. And we're on to Magus. So this time we don't have save anywhere anymore. 
So we're just going to get into this fight and run away. Uh, I guess one thing that I never really talked about was running away in this game. Uh, if you hold L and R, your runaway counter actually starts building up before the fight starts. And if you open your menu, the runaway counter will also build up while you're in the menu. So on ATB wait, you can normally run away very quickly before enemies get a chance to attack you. So we gotta go talk to Melchior now. Or, well, <laughs> pretend to talk to Melchior. He likes to go on a little bit, and uh, we're just gonna use the fade out glitch to skip the majority of his text here. Uh, I'm actually unsure if that happened. But the story tr changes to Rare Red Rock, so saving there is a good safety instead of going in and trying to do it again. Alright, so we are going to do a safety save here and a safety bucket. just to heal up. Uh, generally you don't need to heal up for these fights. You should be able to get through without getting hit. But it's pretty bad if you do get hit. So I have a 8 frame window input right here. So this first guy hits the right side of the screen and the other guy. And if I did it right I should be able to hit 2 with a slash. So there is something you said about using Robo here, because if you can get to Laser Spin, it one-shots these guys, and it's pretty quick. But unfortunately, the text afterwards, having Robo in your party instead of Marley, uh, Ayla is just a little bit too confused by a robot, and she says quite a bit. So it's a little bit faster to have Marley in your party here. But it's very important to swap her out, otherwise you're going to go dancing. Dancing is very slow. So we're just gonna mash this fight. Chrono's slash attack also has very slow and or very quick animation. So I just use that instead of any other attack. Not to mention these guys give pretty good tech and experience. So best character in the game by far. And if you disagree, well, you're wrong. Ayla has the best, best like character traits. She's completely loyal. She'll even help an enemy if they're in trouble. Like, I don't know. There's just no fault to her. All right. So we're gonna swap Marley out. Like I said, she likes to go dancing and dancing is very slow. So we're going to skip that chest for now, we're going to get it on our way out. And I guess, uh, I guess our characters are hungry for a little soup. Because <laughs> it's definitely soup and not some sort of uh, alcoholic beverage, that's for sure. So, kind of a fun cutscene, at least when you, you learn how to progress it as quickly as possible. Unga. So you talk to her, talk to Robo, and then Robo's just gonna, like, do some stuff. We're gonna ruin his party by hanging out in front of him. Oh, Luca, what are you doing? You having fun? As soon as he starts blinking, though, that means that the, the game has progressed and we can actually talk to Ayla and get into the cutscene where we mash. So yeah, in the, in the DS version, what they're drinking is called Skull Smash, 
and that's because it makes your skull feel like it's been smashed in. A little bit more realistic to what was intended. If dancing was faster, I would do it every time. Hopefully you guys can hear the mash. If you have any mash emotes, now is a good time to put them in chat. Alright. We wrecked Ayla. She just can't drink as fast as us. <laughs> Definitely a reminder to stay hydrated. Yep. <laughs> Wait until I do the uh, the level shell skip where I do the controller destroying mash. You guys will definitely hear that one. <laughs> mash potato. <laughs> so here you don't actually want to close that first sleeping text box. Because if you close it right away, another one's going to appear. And then you have to close that one before you can actually talk to Ayla. So you just want to leave the text box up until you're close enough to Ayla that you can mash it and get into the cutscene. Alright, so things are pretty safe here because we healed at the bucket. Another instance of fade out to, to skip a cutscene. And I mean, Kino is probably the least interesting character in the game. So skipping anything that uh, Kino has to say is a win in my book. Kino's kind of like uh, Frog early game, just very, you know, low self-esteem, not feeling too good, whiny. Crushing my buzz, man. So here there's a bunch of battles, but as long as you move the right way, you're not ever going to get into them. Again, uh, marathon safety save. Okay. So as long as everything went right, we are still on the correct RNG from about 40 minutes ago, the last time we reloaded. So Chrono should get hit for 34 here. And then this slash should kill both the guys. We can set Luca's memory to fire. Ayla doesn't really matter. Chrono getting hit for 34 there is an indication that we are going to get the crit necessary for the next fight as well as the fights afterwards. So same trick that I used before, I'm going to, instead of like attacking with Luka and then having to mash Chrono's attack, I'm just going to wait for Chrono's turn. And that way, there's zero chance of the enemy coming out of his stun lock. Some interesting movement here. Uh, in this next screen, if you don't buffer your direction as you come out of this door, you'll get into a fight automatically, so it's very important that you do that. Walking here just for timing to get past that, that monkey. And a run away before the enemy gets a chance to attack, otherwise that throws off our crit value for the next fight. So I believe Chrono gets Magic Scarf here. Uh, right. Oops. Uh, Ayla gets Berserker and we remove the Ruby Vest. And we'll shelter just because. Very important to remove that ruby vest. Uh, A, because it means that Ayla is protected from Nisbell's magic attack when he releases the electricity, but also the ruby vest is going to go on Frog a little bit later. And if you forget to remove it, the fights can definitely go the wrong way. Uh, I do have some notes, but a lot of this I've been... I've been running this for so long now that a lot of it is second nature. Nice. So you kind of want to get Chrono's Lightning and then Luca's turn to pop up right afterwards. And that means that we should be able to save a little bit on this fight. 
So Ayla's gonna auto attack. Ayla's gonna crit and we can slash. Again, and then just gonna release his energy. So if we do this exactly right, then we should skip another energy release. So we wait here on Chrono's turn. And that's to set up this next turn here, where Ayla's gonna crit, Luca's gonna get a chance to input a fire, and then Chrono can sneak in a slash right here as his menu pops up during the animation. So if we did this right, and we hit this mash attack, no, just barely missed it. It's not the end of the world. I think Luca's attack should finish it, so I'm gonna wait. Yeah. Yeah, so we lost about eight or nine seconds there. Uh, is the whole game manipulated? Uh, yeah, for the most part, but honestly, for consistent speedruns, it's just knowing how to fix things if you mess up, because there's not really any point on resetting there. We're just losing a little bit of time. No, this is not pre-recorded. This is live, just for you, D-Guy. Um, okay, so we're done here. We just need to remember to pick up the Berserker here. Otherwise, we have to come all the way back. So trigger this fight early. I'm glad that uh, my run is so polished that it seems pre-recorded. I'll take that as a compliment. Okay, we got the Berserker. And that's going to do quite a lot of work once we make our way into Magus's castle. with the red rock and both pieces of the Masamune. We're gonna fix it, but we're gonna glitch it before we fix it. Frog loves becoming berserk, it's very true. So a bit of an interesting thing here, where we're actually gonna fade out into the basement where the next part of the cutscene happens. And so we actually get, keep control during this cutscene when there would normally be a bunch of animation. And again, like Yakra, when I pointed that out, if you run into Melchior when he's doing his head nodding, uh, it'll actually speed up his animation a little bit so you can progress this cutscene a little bit further than intended. So when he's nodding his head, turn away to mash, and then run into him again. Minor, minor frame saves, but you might as well go for it. This is totally free. Because you're supposed to have Luca and Robo during that cutscene, and they do a bunch of, like, dancing around and working the stone and... <clears throat> pardon me. A bunch of other stuff. But by going into there while having control, that's pretty much all skipped. So yeah, we're coming up on the longest cutscene in the game. So if anyone's got any questions about what's going on, if there's anything that you want me to elaborate on, now is a really good time to ask.
This is a pretty important bird skip too, because I'm still on the correct RNG value. Good, we got it. If we got in the fight there, we would have had to reload before Megas' castle. Well, Megas was taught by the great Ozzy. And, well, Ozzy might not be a good fighter and a coward and a very not too deep character. His magic's not half bad. So we're coming up on chances for news. Nope. We go through this screen four times and there's a one in eight chance of seeing a new. Hopefully we get blessed by one. Uh, yeah, the, the biggest recent development is uh, LSS becoming a little bit more reasonable. That's been around for about a year. Um, some other little things like Cake and Dash uh, that I did earlier, saving a little bit of time. Uh, what's What else is new? Um, yeah, there was a strat that I used on uh, Dragon Tank, which skips a fight. There is a slightly newer strat for Masamune in the Berserk fight, which will also cut an attack using the same kind of thing. But it's a lot, it's a little bit more complicated than the one that I did, and it only saves like a handful of seconds. So I, I tend to not go for it because it is an opportunity to mess up. But uh, LSS becoming consistent or at least way more consistent and not just a complete crapshoot is really nice. Yeah, this is the console version of the game. I think if you were playing uh, Glitchless, there is some argument to be said about DS because the text is really fast for English. But if you were to play on console, original hardware, and wanted to play uh, any percent English is faster because of the magic boost from unequipped glitch. Uh, although with maybe some new strategies in Japanese, you might be able to get it closer because the text is faster in, in Japanese. The PS version is good for the the movies, but that's about it. Yeah, the load, the load times in PSX is just, oh, it's pretty rough. E even when I was playing it when it first came out when I was younger, definitely a big off put. Like, it definitely turned me off of the game. And I don't think I ever beat the PlayStation version just because of the loading times. Same with the PlayStation version of Final Fantasy VI. Like, I got pretty far, but the loading times, every time you got into battle, were, were quite a bit. I think the, the biggest uh, problem with the DS version is you need a modded DS in order to get your your recording or your streaming out of it, uh, or you're playing on emulator. And I mean, playing on emulator isn't really a problem, but I just find consoles are a lot more conducive to streaming and recording. We're gonna swap Robo in here. And that's the first half of the cutscene. One more chance at a new. Hey! Kapanu coming to give us a little bit of luck. That was our last chance at a new, actually, so it's good that he showed up. <laughs> How hard is it to speedrun this? If you're looking to make good time, there's definitely work that you're going to have to put in. There's a lot of scripts that you need to learn. But uh, one thing that I am working on is kind of a, a dummy's guide to speedrunning any percent. So it's still going to force you to do a lot of the, the glitches and a lot of the skips. But it's going to remove the... Uh, it's going to remove the RNG manipulation 
just so that it like you could literally sit down follow the notes and beat the game uh because fun funnily enough with uh with this category things aren't quite as tight as with no lss because you need to like you need to get every single tech point along the way for Marley to learn haste otherwise there's no way you beat lava shell where in this you don't really have that and uh the retinite fight is quite a bit safer than in no lss even though you have the swallow in no lss this one is just like i don't know frog is a lot better than marley let's put it that way when it comes to damage output uh spoilers we're using frog instead of marley for retinite and we're actually going to teach frog some magic too but that's uh that's a little bit later and yeah, m when I say a good time, basically like below an any percent run that uh, skips the Lavo Shell skip, a good time is below that because you're like, you know, you're if you can't save any time when you're skipping 18 minutes, then you, you need to do a little bit more work, essentially. Yo, the sub coming in from TN. Thank you for the sub. So we are on our way to Megas' castle. Things are only going to get tighter and tighter. Alright, so after all these cutscenes, the speedrun begins instantly. I'm going to be buffering my in inputs right here, right now, so that I trigger this fight as soon as possible. And we're hopefully going to be able to run away with only getting attacked once. And we'll probably get attacked twice. Yeah. 19 and 23. Run away. That doesn't really matter too much. It's an indicator that I'm on the correct RNG, though. After all that. We're now about an hour on the same seed, doing everything the right way. No fight? Okay. <laughs> and uh, squeezing past those bats is why I had to buffer my inputs to start the battle as soon as possible. Possible. Alright. So this is a bit of a attention builder here we're gonna go through a very quiet part of the game it sticks out like a sore thumb just how quiet it is <laughs> all right so minor time save you have to go up both wings of the castle here and just make it to the end room so that you can trigger the uh, the first fight that Ozzy gives you. Nothing here is going to give you a, a fight yet, except for these small children here, I believe, guarding the chest. But luckily we don't need what's in it. And uh, doing Slash's side before Flea's side means that when we... Uh, when we actually trigger the Aussie cutscene, our players are going to group up into their proper positions just a little bit quicker. Because Frog is going to go f further to the left and then Robo grouping up to the right. Those kind of optimizations are in a lot of games, like Chrono Cross as well. So luckily, Robo is ridiculously awesome. And with his uh, dual tech with Chrono, we're just going to one-shot this entire fight.
X Strike. Okay, so Chrono now gets the Power Scarf. Frog gets Ruby Vest and that. And I'm gonna take off his helmet, just a little bit of protection. Make sure that we don't run into any of these guys, because that's instant fight and instant loss of the RNG seed. So Frog's going to hit for 188. It's going to counter Frog with the MP Buster, but Frog's Berserk, so we don't really care about how much M MP he has. And here we, we learn what beauty really is. Beauty is not on the outside, everybody. Beauty is what's on the inside. And what's on inside what on the inside of Flea is power. Flea is super powerful. Flea will just laugh at us the entire time as we're attacking. So Chrono gets hit for 49. Frog shows his Berserk, and we're going to let Frog do pretty much all the work here. This has been a strategy that's been around for quite some time. This was one of the first RNG manipulated fights because, you know, not having an enemy do any kind of attack on you is pretty quick. We're not going to have to heal. There's no attack animations other than Frog's. It's a nice bit of a break, too. I'm going to drink a little water. So really what it comes down to is we're going to wait for Frog to attack 16 times. And then we're going to do a couple extra attacks with uh, Robo and Chrono just to make sure that he doesn't do anything. I'm looking for a pattern of four regular attacks and then a uh, critical. So the ending of this fight sort of changed a bit over time. We used to actually uh, delay the end of this fight just by a little bit to set Frog onto, or sorry, set Robo onto item memory. But that's not really necessary anymore. And this is one of the biggest time saves compared to the way that I used to run the game. This is like the newest thing that I've learned is the, uh, the ending to this fight and the slash fight coming up where we, we're going to manipulate quite a few crits for Frog. Again, making sure that we don't talk to any of these guys, because it's going to start a fight. Pacifist percent, almost. Alright. Please help. Relieve us of this misery. Poor decedents. They don't really know what's up. So here we just want to make sure that Chrono gets his turn off before Frog attacks. Pretty big window. And we're going to be set up for quite a few crits here. So I'm, I'm going to try and talk a little bit during this fight, but it's very important that I do it correctly. So it's a bit of a focus mode here. So we're kind of using Frog's Berserker to pace the fight. We're going to do all of our inputs buffered during animations for the most part. So Robo, we're buffering it during Slash's animation here. And doing that also ensures that we stay on script. And so Chrono slashing instead of attacking is making sure that Frog maximizes the amount of crits that he has. Because it is possible to steal crits if you attack with the wrong character. So Chrono attacks, Robo attacks.
Tack. Alright, so that's the end of the first phase. Not a big deal that Chrono dies here. We're not getting any experience or attack until the second part of the fight. So we gotta be pretty quick here. Give ourselves. Heal Frog. And then we're gonna let Frog do some work. Frog's gonna crit. And then I'm gonna squeeze in a bunch of attacks until Robo attacks twice. And what we're doing with uh, Chrono and Robo's attacks is we're actually progressing the crit value so that Frog's able to get the most crits. That's the second attack. Another crit. And then he's gonna spin cut chrono. So the big thing here is Frog is just beast moding this fight. Look at all these crits. So Slash gets a slash attack off, and we're going to wait for Frog to crit one more time. Alright, so Frog should get countered here. I'm just going to wait for Frog to attack one more time, and we're going to set Chrono to Slash Memory. And we're done. Not a bad Slash fight. But it's one of those things where if you mess up, it's pretty scary. So Chrono gets a uh, Slasher, Magic Scarf, Frog gets Hero Metal, and we're going to shelter up because, well, everyone's on death's door right now. Again, uh, try not to get into any of these fights because we're going to carry this RNG string. Well, really, we could carry it to the end of the game almost. One of the main reasons for setting Chrono onto tech memory is to make these runaways really quick because otherwise Chrono set on item and the L and R buttons will scroll you in the item menu. So when you're trying to run away and you're in the item menu, there's a chance that you might lose your cursor. This is the SNES version. More quick runaways here. Yeah, Slasher is an amazing weapon. So these fights, um, even if you mess up Slash a little bit, you should still be in the right RNG windows, and these fights will sort of normalize you. But this last fight, it's very important that you run away without any extra attacks. Otherwise, the crit in the next fight coming up is not going to be a thing anymore. Alright. Hello, Ozzy. Talking about cakes and pickles and stuff. And jam. Can't forget the jam. Cakes, pickles, and jam. Ah, uh, that's definitely not gonna work. We're gonna wait these out. You can get through there quickly, but you need to manipulate movement pretty precisely. So we're gonna sneak past this guy, and we're gonna squeeze past this guy.
and onto everyone's most favorite room in Megas' castle. Take it a little bit safe, just to be sure. So this next room, you need to start moving as soon as, otherwise there's a chance that first bird's going to catch you. So you have to buffer your movement as the room is loading. There is a slightly faster strategy here too, but it is frame dependent and very difficult. And what you would use is the rolly coming down to push the bird out of bounds instead of frog. But uh... You can get out of here, Robo, we don't need you. Alright, get out of here, Robo. Plasma gun strats. Yeah, that fight went awesome. That fight's not, like, super important to do exactly right, but it saves time if you do it the, the correct way. Uh, and the reason it doesn't really matter is because we're running away from this fight, which is going to normalize our RNG. And we'll have a guaranteed critical value for Frog on his first attack. Okay, so Chrono's gonna mash the slash. Frog's gonna crit. Luca's gonna mash her fire attack. A little bit of X Strike for the fans. It's the best tech in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Super cool. All right, really important chest here. You never want to forget to pick this guy up. Thanks for the shoutouts, dudes. The speed belt is very important. Luckily, all the fights in this screen you can just skip. Alright, so we made it through. Magus's castle still on the correct RNG seeds. I don't think that matters. Good thing I didn't attack Ozzy, though. <laughs> yeah, 124 I think is good. Really what we're learning for is 119 on the last switch. And that's going to be our indicator that our battle value at the end is exactly where we want it to be. We go perfect so i'm gonna go for the the new magus fight it's a little bit tighter uh it's just minor uh minor changes to the last one but we're trying to extend the rng window we want to kill him quickly but we don't want to get any dark matter and uh the other thing is we still want to stay on the correct rng if we can help it so I think we were good for shelter skip, but marathon safety will just shelter to be sure. Boom. Double trouble, toil and bubble. Make my soup with frogs and rubble. One of my favorite scenes in the game. Magus, I have something for you. 
Hey, it's that stupid frog. You kissed any princesses lately? Oh. It's the Masamune. I bet you're just dying to use it. The black wind begins to blow. It's a joke. It's a joke. One of you will certainly die. But okay, give me your best shot. If you're prepared for the void. Prepare yourselves. So holding X here should give me a shadow barrier right off the bat. Manipulating barriers in the first part of the fight is the most important part. Because if you start getting fire barriers and stuff, you're in for bad time. Making sure to input the rocket roll with Chrono so that he's the one that gets attacked. We get another shadow barrier. There we go. Another rocket roll here. Uh, a lot of people do ram inspection, and just by trial and error, you figure out what's going to happen. There's actually a chart based on what RNG value you're on, what counter Magus is going to do, or what barrier he's going to do next. Some little mid-tonics. Tax frog and we use a slash instead of a lightning, just a little bit quicker. Made for Chrono. I might have messed up a little bit, it's not the end of the world now that we're past the barrier phase. We got the slash off before the spell, so that's good. Frog crit plus chrono slash. And then we're going to do the reverse. Chrono slash plus frog crit. We're kind of using Robo as a way to time everything here. So we should get a dark matter now. Uh, we got another Dark Matter. So we're gonna have to revive Frog here, I believe. He dies, Chrono doesn't. Not the end of the world. It's just one attack off. Yeah, we were that close. <laughs> Invalid, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we lost about 15 seconds at the end there, but it's not really that dangerous. Yeah, we might as well reset just to be safe.
Alright, so this is the one and only bathroom break in the run. But I feel strong. We're not going to do it. 153 is a pretty good Magus time, although, like, it is possible to get a 140 something Magus time, which is pretty nuts. But 153 for a marathon is a pretty solid Magus time. I just need to say so myself. Who's Wizard? Thank you for the good luck. Yeah, there's a lot of the game that ends up getting uh, skipped, conquer this. But as an any percent speed run, it kind of makes sense. We're trying to do the very, very minimum amount of the game as possible. Pretty much at this point, we're just progressing this story until we get to the green dream. And then we need to get a hand at, get our hands on two elixirs and we're set to beat the game. If there was a way to get Green Dream earlier than going through all of this, then you wouldn't even fight Magus. But luckily for you guys, I mean, Magus' castle is pretty hype, so the speed run does include it. <laughs> Lots of O's. Really goes to show when uh, we're like renaming characters to a single, single character is a big time save. Gotta be careful here. You can actually mash and sleep again. It doesn't actually cost any time, but I don't like doing it. Okay, so we got another pretty long fade out. And it's like, it's really not the end of the world if you miss it, but it's, it's definitely annoying. So again, I'm holding start plus B as I hit my menu button. So my menu closes as soon as possible, first frame. And I'm just gonna move myself closer and closer to the trigger, there we go. That way we don't need to hear the old man go on. And minor safety save just in case. So here we don't actually need to do the menu trick, we can just hold L and R and run away. But in the next fight here, we're also just going to hold L and R. And the way that the uh, Avian Rex's face in the battle is actually going to let me know whether I'm still in my right RNG window, because there's a chance that you can beat Magus early. But since we got the extra fight, or the extra dark matter, there's like pretty much no chance I was early. And yeah, both those guys were facing left, so we're good, we're laughing. So two kind of tight pixel perfect skips here. I'm gonna try and get them. So I'm pausing and uh, buffering the direction so I can move one pixel. That was not one pixel. Please. There we go. So yeah, if you hit the uh, the left or any direction and the pause button on the same frame, you'll move one pixel and then the game will pause so you can let go of the directional button. Nice. Didn't even have to pause for that. Absolutely Canadian, J-Ho. J-Howell, sorry. I didn't see the yell. So here we're going to set up our party of Chrono, Ayla, and Luca. Yeah, Ayla's amazing. We're going to see her power against the next boss coming up. Again, we're going to use the uh, Berserker strategy with her. It does quite a lot to uh, save us time.
is the Berserker allows us to buffer all of our inputs and play the uh, the Black Trino battle on battle speed one. Bit of a menu here. Uh, oh, I'm gonna drop down. Okay, so Power Scarf on Chrono. Taylor gets Power Glove. Mesomel. Ruby Vest. Unequip Armor. Speed Belt. Save just in case. So here we're going to set Chrono's tech memory to Cyclone. And we took the Berserker off Ayla just as a safety. Oops. So yeah, before, we're talking about a year and a half ago, we used to have to fight the first set of these Reptites. And it was very tight whether it was manipulated or not um, to save a little bit of time uh, because we needed the extra tech points for Marley. But since Marley is essentially not used at all for the rest of this run, it's not really a thing. long as 100% run uh, I think world record is 445 something like that a little bit more luck in that run too because there's the uh, the elevators in the black omen which can give you anywhere from zero to four fights and that's kind of like the biggest RNG in the whole run right at the end So Kino's being low self-esteem again. Um, tiny little frame saver here on the next screen. Uh, like I said before, when you run into NPCs, you speed up their clock, and that can speed up how quickly Kino opens up that skeleton door there. So we can get some swag frames. Okay, so there's tons of fights here that I don't want to get into because I can't run away from any of them. And it's just really bad if I get into them. <laughs> Alright, so we need to fight two of these fights in order to learn Spin Cut. Spin cut is integral to beating the next boss, the Black Terrano. And I'm going to do a tiny bit of marathon safety here too. Or norm normally I just start my fade out right away, but we're going to save here. So this is Nisabel 2. Say hi while you can, because we're not actually going to fight him. I'm going to walk into the transition. And then the fight triggers at the top of this room, so we just have to fade out onto that trigger. And voila, we beat the fight. Cool. So there's kind of two outcomes here. Uh, either you can have Ayla with the Berserker and mash before she gets a turn. You can do an RNG jump by targeting one of the enemies that dies, which is what I opted to do there. There's Spin Cut and Fire Sword, so we're good. So we want to shelter, just make sure everything is good. Give her the Berserker. And again, just a safety save. As there's a lot of fights here that are tough to skip and if you move in the wrong way at all it's GG's. Skip these buttons. Mm. 
<laughs> actually wasn't 100% certain about that skip, but we're good. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it for the grinding. We really need to learn Spin Cut in order to learn Fire Sword. After that, it doesn't really matter that much. Alright. Big scary dinosaur. But this fight is all scripted as well, so as long as I do everything right, we should be okay. But again, I'm, I'm ideally making all of my inputs during animations and not too, too late. Basically, after the numbers stop bouncing is too late. <laughs> we get psychokinesis on Chrono. They're just trying to take out Asla as quickly as we can. <laughs> yeah, nah. So, you notice Luca's a little bit low on HP, but don't worry, we're gonna heal her just before she gets chomped. Now we're just going to wait until the fire attack. Get the last attack in and that'll take care of Vazla. So now we need to heal up and refresh our MP as well. So yeah, with uh, Ayla Berserked, we're going to get the same crit string as we used in the Nisbel fight. Just a whole bunch of criticals. And we're using Ayla's attacks with the Berserker to set our pace. So we're just making all of the inputs when she does her attacks. That's what, this is why we needed to pick up the extra speed tab for Luca. If she was one speed slower, at about this part of the fight she would desync and we would not be able to get the, the fire attacks off in time. So here we're going to do a quick fire sword. This is one of the only unbuffered inputs in the entire fight. And Black Trino is going to burn our butts. Thanks to the Ruby Vest, Chrono doesn't die, and Ayla is a tank. Chrono needs to ether himself as well. All these little things that we picked up along the way are starting to matter. So we're going to wait for the defense to drop. Oops. 
is right about meow. Oh wait, no. One more attack. <laughs> right about meow. Funk soul brother. So yeah, this fight's actually going really good. Yeah, finding out that the Berserker was allowing us to do this fight on Battle Speed 1, because this fight used to be super scary. We used to drop the Battle Speed to 2 and mash all of our inputs, and hot damn, it was scary. This fire sword is the end. If not, Chrono's next attack will definitely be the end. Yep, there we go. So we're only about a minute, 20 minutes behind my personal best. Which is pretty good. We're on pace for a sub 240 run. Yeah, this guy's got a lot of HP. It's almost unfair even for vanilla playthrough. Right, so we get a bit of a Lavos cutscene here. And uh, the next boss coming up is the teleporter boss. Gotta watch out for that. Oh, thanks, Angry. Yeah, it's it takes a lot of work. I mean, I've been running this game for three years now, a little bit more then. But there's been a lot of really dedicated runners putting in a lot of work. Shoutouts to Killai, Red Slash, Ottavino, El Grand Jerry, El Magus. Too, too many to really name. Like this run is really the culmination of a lot of really intelligent people working very hard to crack this game wide open. I used to run this category back when Lavo Shell Skip wasn't solved, and you basically would play for two and a half hours, three hours, and then just start rolling the dice with about a 2% chance of actually getting it. Yeah, Red Slash is the current world record holder with a time of 2 hours, 29 minutes and change. That sub-230 barrier is ridiculous. And he's actually the one that figured out the uh, final piece to the RTA execution of Lavo Shell Skip. I kind of helped figure out the consistent breakaway and we were all working on like Inichi's old notes for the basic setup. Also shout outs to Jackifer for putting a fire under all of our butts. Just walking in being like oh yeah level shell skips doable and then like completing a run within like the first couple weeks of running the game. Yeah, for the most part, secondary dialogues don't matter too, too much. There's a couple places where I do that to save, like, frames, but it's not a big deal. <clears throat> Alright. So, teleporter boss. This is the big divergence between this route and the any percent route that doesn't do the Lavo Shell Skip. Because here, all we're doing is we're going to talk to the, uh, the lady in the, the castle to unlock the, the Green Dream side quest, the Sunken Desert side quest. And then after that, we don't really need to do anything else other than get the Green Dream by beating Retinite and picking up a couple elixirs. Yeah. Snow music is the best music, obviously. 
it's a bit of a shame that you don't get a little bit more of corridors of time here. You get like 15 second snippets of it. But yeah, this is my favorite song, really, all jokes aside. We even learned how to play it on the guitar. Pretty fun. So here, these teleporters, if you buffer the wrong movement or make the wrong movement, they'll just suck you back into them and you end up having to ride them an extra two times. Alright, so yeah, you would go and talk to Janus and Shala if you were doing no LSS, but here, just gonna heal up, talk to the plant lady, you love plants. What you should, should do, secretly plant it. And it's very, 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 very important that you close that text box, otherwise it doesn't count. And if you make your way to the Green Dream side quest and it's not there, you have to go all the way back, talk to the plant lady again. This is being played on console. I'm using the uh, the SCART output on a North American Super Nintendo console, so we're getting the 240p, 60 frame per second capture. I mean, most games run at 30, but a lot of the special effects run at 60 frames per second, like transparencies and other things like that. So apart from like a mod of like a one chip SNES. This is about the best picture you're gonna get out of the system. All right, here we go. Teleporter boss beaten. So another bit of a change compared to no LSS is we're gonna swap frog in here and we're gonna teach that dude some magic we're also gonna clear the, the text here because that'll actually get in the way when we try and do Labo shell skip and Ayla is so powerful she does not need magic so facto minimo magico Ba -ba. And no. Very important skip there. Actually, I probably could have saved elsewhere, but that's cool. Yeah, so in no LSS, if you talk to Janice and Shala, then you have to power up the pendant. Uh, do the whole cutscene where you fight the... Uh, Fight the golem. You can go get Swallow, which is a much better weapon for Chrono. But here, unfortunately, we don't get a chance to do that, but it is faster. Yet, yeah, uh, it's Frog is able to do more damage to Retinite than Marley, so we basically have him for his sword. Um, I think we're all good here. Bronze Mail, Ruby Vest, Power Glove. Uh, as a mail? I think that was supposed to happen. Yeah, it was Mesomail. And we are going to save and reload here, just to be sure that we're on the correct RNG. Alright, so we're doing a bit of a risky strat. But here's hoping it works out. We're gonna do. We're gonna do Battle Speed 1 Retinite, which is probably the newest strat for the person who asked that before. Gotta make sure we don't get into this fight here. Pretty important skip. Please. Okay, we're good. Mm. And it's just risky because if I mess up my script, which it's easy to do in this fight, 
then I'm stuck winging it on battle speed one. That's the the risk essentially. Nice battle position. All right, let's go go go. Definitely focus mode for this fight. need frogs turn to come up here good so the sand cyclone should be on chrono Frog Spin Cut Rolo. And now he should do his Quake Attack. Just want these legs to die before they do an absorb. are dead I can move that menu down to the bottom it's kind of an annoying thing with this fight oops kind of messed up definitely doesn't matter here though As long as the legs die, the rest of the fight is pretty safe. And as long as I don't attack the eyeball either, because <laughs> that's real bad. If the eyeball dies, this guy goes into berserk mode, and at this level, it's pretty much impossible to beat him. I think we're actually going to mid tonic frog here. Because one more, one more absorb on Frog and he's toast. And I mean, shoutouts to X Strike here, guys. Love X Strike. <laughs> it's such a great attack. Just a couple more attacks here. Yeah, there was the Absorb on Frog.
we go. And we're just going to let this thing run away. Because we don't need the tech points, and we don't want to learn any more techs than we're going to learn here. Alright, get out of here. That was essentially the last boss of the game. So we got the elixir. We'll go talk to Fiona now. With Robo in the party, so that he offers to stay behind. So now we just have to go watch the uh, the camping cutscene, which is one of the better cutscenes in the game, in my opinion. I really like it. And that's basically our barrier to getting Green Dream. Yeah, Robo's got a green thumb. It's going to give us the green dream. <laughs> yeah, Son of Sun is actually pretty difficult in the speed run. If you're not manipulating RNG, if you are, then you should be able to hit the flames, everything correctly. I don't know. I think Frog wears gloves, so we'll never be able to tell if he has a green thumb or not. Yeah, he's got blue thumb, or blue gloves. <laughs> Alright, so we're coming up on Lavo Shell Skip after this cutscene. I guess I'll give you guys a bit of a, a rundown of what I'm going to do, because it's going to happen fast, and either it's going to work or it's not. So with uh, Lavo Shell Skip, essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to be using the zip from the pillars uh, to move Chrono in an unattended way, swapping party members in between multiple pillar zips to regain control and position myself accordingly. And then as I smash my menu buttons, almost breaking my controller, um... I'm going to open and close the menu, which for some reason stores your X and Y coordinate. And if I get teleported to the Lavos bucket area, and I was able to store the correct X and Y coordinate, then I actually land right on the loading zone to go inside Lavos, and I skip the entire refight. Long story short, <laughs> uh, but there's a bunch of other mini glitches that are going to happen where in Japanese the text is so quick that we're not going to have to do any kind of breakaway. But on English, unfortunately, the text is a little bit slower, so what I'm going to have to do is cause player three to be offset from where they should be according to the way the game is intended to be played so I have enough time to make my frame-perfect input after I've set everything up. Alright, so we get to save Luca's mom too, which is always a bonus. Poor Lara never deserved that. And this is another use of being able to hold all the buttons for a password. As you close the text box. So right here, after the text box is closed, I just hold all the buttons and it inputs it for me as quick as possible. Uh, hot for boys, this run is a any percent run which does the Lavo Shell Skip. And we're basically on our way to do that right now. We just need to get one more elixir. <clears throat> So I mean, I'm hoping I can get this for you guys first try. I'm really hoping, but there's a chance, uh, just with the way that it works, that it might not happen first try. But we should be able to get it in the first, like, you know, four to five tries, hopefully. Green Dream get.
<laughs> to crush legs. Oh my god. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. <laughs> so yeah, here we swap Marley into the party. We're going to start her end-of-game side quest. But really, we're just going to use it to get to the uh, the chest that powers up as you progress through the game. Like, if you were to pick up this chest early, I think it's like a heal or a tonic. Uh, Mid-game, it's a mid-aether. And if you don't pick it up until... Uh, essentially, after starting the side quest, it turns into an elixir. Which is a lot better than the other place that we used to go for elixirs, which was 2300. And I mean, 2300 is really far out of the way. This is pretty quick. We just have to mash through about, you know, 30 35 seconds of text. So, this is it, guys. Pray for good RNG and proper execution. Because essentially with perfect execution, this trick should be 50-50. But there are two frame perfect inputs that I need to make in order for that to happen. So we're going to save here. Reload. Mash load. Good load. So I'm walking left and right as Gaspar's text writes, and that's what's causing Robo to sort of lag behind a little bit. Um, right about here, as I go left, Robo should sort of unattach, and he's a little bit offset now. Not as good as I'm hoping, but it should still be enough. So I'm going to line up on a pixel. I want to set up on a good pixel here, uh, mainly for the window in order to get the trick later. Okay, come on. I need to move up one pixel. Go. Okay. Just hope that's not going to work. Yeah. So. Probably the hardest part of this trick is getting the right pause frames because what I'm doing is I'm trying to pause on the exact frame that I need to press A and if you unpause and press A at the exact same time Then the game thinks that you pressed A on the frame that you paused right, So there's a Again a bit of a short breakaway It should be okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, first, first try is pretty tough to hit. Pretty lucky to get to. Right, there we go. Oh, that was a good one too. Uh, Doe. Should be good. There's not really many other tricks like this in the whole run, so it's pretty insane. We got it second try, which is pretty good. This was figured out by a Tasser. So he spent a lot of time just crushing this game. Second try is pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, wait, no, my load was bad. My load was bad. That was a bad load, too. I need a mash load. There's basically two windows before the bright window load. There, that's good. Okay. 
yeah, so this fight, obviously not nearly powerful enough to do it the intended way. So with the Green Dream equipped on Frog, we should be able to just heal this guy into Oblivion. And it definitely saved time remembering that my load wasn't correct. There's basically two early windows and then a bright window. Yeah, I can tell by the way that the ATB loaded up that we're definitely in the right, right window here. Frog gets up. Alright. You'll do. <laughs> yeah, the lasers are pretty hilarious. Yeah, Inichi is definitely the godfather of Chrono Trigger speedruns and glitches. I like to think he still watches some Chrono Trigger speedruns every now and then. Alright, one last glitch to go. There's also a minor one second time saver that I'm going to go for right here. Uh, so I'm going to hold start and B to close the menu as soon as possible. And I'm going to try and open up my menu during this transition. This used to actually be required in the old route, where you had to like swap which character had the green dream on it. I missed it, but not anymore. Okay. Alright, Frog, you're dead. Alright, so time's coming up, by the way. And time. Awesome, awesome run for a marathon. Holy smokes. 236. Sub 240 is really, really good for a marathon run, in my opinion. Thanks everyone for the GG's. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Everything went pretty well. I think the only place where I lost a was uh, probably around our series, uh, going for the slime minute. Look at all those emotes. Yeah, I'm really glad that uh, that I was able to show you guys getting second try LSS is pretty hot. Um, yeah, uh, keep an eye out. We have a Chrono Trigger Discord. Uh, you, you can find the link to that on the uh, the speedrun.com leaderboards. If you got any questions, if you want to learn this run, you can pop in there, ask away. Me or any of the other guys will gladly help you out. Um, yeah, it's a really fun run. You can easily get like a 245, 250 time. Even if you don't go for like all of the really, really tight scripts, you can just like plow your way through the game pretty easily. But yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Thanks RPG Limit Break for having me here, questing for glory, being a really cool marathon, showing off a whole bunch of games. Stick around for Digimon World 4 by Fire1520, Mario and Luigi Partners in Time by Ghost King, uh, the one and only Puexel later on tonight playing Final Fantasy Legend 3. Bunch of really, really nice runs coming up. Ooh, Lunar Silver Star too. Cool. And Lufia. Oh yeah, you guys are in for a treat for the rest of this run. Um, let's see, uh, these credits are actually pretty short, so I guess I can just uh, cut my stream whenever is good for you guys. Uh, just uh, let me know in Discord and I should be good to go.
thanks again, everyone, for hanging out. And uh, we'll definitely see you around. Ahead a little bit? Okay. Yeah, the music cuts pretty abruptly once the end comes up. This is probably one of the shortest uh, credits in the entire game. Yeah, it's the profit ending. Man, I love seeing all these emotes. Pretty cool that you're actually able to just like pull in my set of emotes for the run. That's a really cool thing for uh, Frank of AC. I am ready for the Magus Force Red Slash. If history is to be changed, let it be changed. If my face fate is to be destroyed, I simply must laugh. Ah! Ha ha! I guess we learned where, uh, uh, what's his name? Learned to laugh? Oh, I should know you. Is it Zell? I haven't played Final Fantasy X in years. Yeah, that, like, my, my estimate was a 255 and I'm 20 minutes under estimate. That's pretty crazy. Alright guys, stick around, stay tuned. I love you all. Titus, that's the name. Aha! <laughs> Alright guys, enjoy the chill music, enjoy the other runs. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much to Drunken Draconian for Chrono Trigger Any Present with the sexy Lava Shell Skip. Coming up next is a 